Caitlin, we're recording. Oh, well, look at that. I don't even remember how to do that. It's Welcome. episode 40, Caitlin. Oh my gosh, really? Sort of. I mean, we had all these random, so I just decided 40. Kind of like that's how old we are. Right. <laughs> I'm only 39. Oh, okay. Anyway, welcome. This is Caddy Jacks Knits. In case you forgot, this is Caddy Jacks. Yeah, that's Caitlin, maybe, or that. Who knows how Zoom yeah, we, I'm pretty sure. Whatever. One of these is, the. let's see, the one in the glasses, that's Caitlin. Right. <laughs> and that's Jackie. The yeah, the one with the evil the laugh. The one with the pain in the, pain the ass. Exactly. Yeah. We're so glad to see you. And like I'm glad audience? to see you, Caitlin. Oh. <laughs> Do you, I have something on my screen that's right over your eye. There we go. Now you're beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, you're not here. I mean, no, and you're not here either. Yeah. I know there are some of you that have missed that. I know. We'll bring it back. It's like Elf on the Shelf. It's like, we have to work on our not interrupting each other on Zoom, though. I can't do that. I know. I so like this is a knitting podcast, and I'm in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. And Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, last, yeah. well, I guess it's, yes, it's, it's our last episode of 2020. Check that off the list. Exactly. Like, and we have all sorts of fun things to share with you today. It's, a, you know, it's not going to be any fun. It's going to be very like business-like. We just have a what? list and we're just going to go down it and then hit. <laughs> exactly. That was not on the list. So Talk Caitlin. About Tell us about your Winter Wonderland Christmas. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, okay. Well, I was very jealous. As most of people were. Uh, we got a Christmas Eve snowstorm that was just spectacular. It was about four inches of that heavy snow and um, it just coated all the trees and we, um, James and I were home alone and um, we went out for sort of a late night walk in the snow in our neighborhood. And we live in this beautiful neighborhood that's a neighborhood arboretum. So the tree, every tree is different. and Every tree was coated in snow and it was just so glorious to walk around in. And actually, this is what, two days later and the snow is still on all the trees. So it was definitely a white Christmas in Knoxville. I looked at your Instagram stories yeah, and I, I love the one with the berries. Yeah, those are hollies. Yeah. Or hollies, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's beautiful, isn't it? That was, yeah. that was my like, woo, Christmas. Yeah, and I know, it's beautiful. And the cardinals in the trees, it's just spectacular. So we were We very had cold, but no snow. We That's managed right. the cold part. Yeah, so apparently this is the, let's see, the eighth time it has snowed in Tennessee or the Knoxville area in the last hundred years. Wow around Christmas. So we feel very lucky we got that because I was a little bit bummed out that our first Christmas would be warm. Yeah. And you did you wear some knitwear on Christmas? I think I spotted you in your Lily's bobble sweater. I was wearing my Lily's bobble sweater. I was also wearing my, um, I did wear my, um, the, oh, the beanie hat that Jamie just knit. Why am I blanking mm -hmm. on it? By Dragon Horde Yarn. Yeah, that's my favorite. That is my favorite knit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wore my favorite sweatshirt with all the holes in the elbows. Uh huh. And didn't get dressed. That was my Christmas. Perfect. <laughs> and it was, then it was like the culminating event was all of us eating cookie dough and watching Lord of the Rings. Oh, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it was good. I love that scene. I think her name's Aelwan. Is that the female elf? I didn't know. But she rides into the forest with Frodo on her horse. That's like, oh. That's a good scene. Yeah. You know it. You know the scene. Know. I've seen it. I just wouldn't know the character's okay. name. Okay. I, I'm not a huge fan. I've only watched it maybe once. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't have teenage boys, so. Like, whatever. So I put this on to coordinate with you today, Kate. You look beautiful. 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 I mean, but I, you're kind of coordinating with me too. We have, we're just good. I, I have, I'm just visually, I'm going from there. So this is from Pittsburgh Mercantile from our beloved Susie Korb. 
Yeah. And uh, this is a, I just want to show it because I'm not going to wear it the whole time, but it looks so good with Caitlin's sweater. It's a, a shawl, a linen shawl that's been designed off of paint splatters. And I have to keep it away from my mother or she'll cut it up. And oh, no, it she quilt. wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. And you have your earrings. I do. My Pittsburgh Mercantile. I just feel like these are very holiday-ish with the doves and... Absolutely. So, and, and then, I how, go ahead. I just, I love how they move. You know, they're just like wearing a wind chime. Yes. I feel like we need to do a public service announcement for the half and half wrap cow we since should. we have them. And because you have a finished one and so do I. I do. And, and, and I know some people have wondered how to style them and what they are. We, can you tell us about the shawl itself, Caitlin? Yes, Jackie. <laughs> So official, could you just unbutton a little bit? I know. Okay, fine. <laughs> but like teacher mode. So welcome to the half wrap cal. We would like to talk about it so that you no kidding. So uh, we started this months ago, and the whole idea was to really just knit this beautiful shawl. It's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. And we have knit ours out of Pearl Soho's linen quilt, which we just cannot get enough of. But there are plenty of people who are knitting it in any other yarn. Maybe it's stash yarn, maybe it's something else, but it's a fingering weight shawl. And it's an epic knit because it takes six skeins of yarn. So the whole mm -hmm. idea would be that we are knitting this all year and looking forward to a 2021 meetup on the hill at Rhinebeck's mm -hmm. in our beautiful array of colors. So mm -hmm. um, this will not be my last, but I'm giving mm -hmm. it a little, I'm, I'm pausing on mm -hmm. my next one because I have a lot of <laughs> things to knit, mm -hmm. but yours is glorious. So mine is knit with rhubarb and pop pink. Pink pop? Whatever. Yeah. And um, I yeah. think my mine I knit on, I don't know, one one needle size up than the pattern recommended. You did four. And, yeah, so it's big, it's big and drapey. I have another one going right here. I, I do find it to be the most comforting knit it ever. Is. And I am just going to splash a few more. Like and that's up. mushroom, right? Yeah. That's beautiful. Isn't that, that is pink, but that's guinea, oh. and turmeric? Mm -hmm. I, that seems so, so you. Yes. But and you're thinking of doing the turmeric with the one you're knitting right now, right? Nope, that's going to be butterscotch. Oh, right, okay, butterscotch. And then, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, that's the, is that the rosewood and? This is honey pink and rosewood pink. Mm -hmm. I like that. And these are just so, God, they feel amazing and they're so easy yeah. to knit. So I think I've said this and we had a Zoom with our half. I know, and that was half, fun. And that was so much fun and we need to do it again because it was so much fun. Um, what was I going to say about, I just, it's so comforting, but I, I do get mildly concerned because, but it's okay. You just have to embrace where you're at. It has derailed me from my sweater knitting. I'm just in a very shawl knitting place and I'm going to be okay poor, with it. Poor thing. We are just so sad for you. Yeah. So this is the, the red mere mortals, The mere mortals in our viewing arena are thankful that they can finally catch up with you a little bit. Yeah. Well, I don't even know what sweater to knit. And there's the other way. I mean, yeah, somebody asked a question on Instagram, like, how do you wear it or something like that? It's well, heavy no. enough. All you do is just sit it down on you and there it sits. It's not going anywhere. No. And you could pin it or, yeah. It's, yeah it's but great. it's, it's glorious. It's also a good lap blanket. I gotta it's say. so romantic. And we just did the, I just did the garter edge, but some people are doing the applied I-cord edge, which is nice. Oh. Like Amy and Leslie friend is doing it. Really? I yeah, know Amy's that. doing a one stitch one. It's at the end of the row. You slip one with the yarn in front. Oh, that's okay. That's considered an applied eye cord. Yes, because it oh. turns the. Oh, all right. Pink. But I like the rustic garter look. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm fine with it just the way it is. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's that it goes on and we have a whole, we have another 
um, shawl quantity of linen quill to give away once we're all done with the cow, but they, Pearl Soho gave away um, a shawl quantity to one of you earlier in the year. So right. that yeah. was exciting. It was. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. I just, I love it so much. So anyways, that's that. Yeah. I'll take it off because it's a little warm. I know. I was happy to, I think I finished it up over Thanksgiving. It's been sitting here, this looking into my Zoom, I just want to mention thank you for everybody too who turned tuned in. Caitlin came. We had a poetry Zoom as well, which yeah, was fantastic. And um, that, I, that was interesting and fun, that experience. I think I felt a little down after it all came to an end. Like, what am I doing? Who am I? <laughs> well, it's such a, it's such a um, extroverted. Yes. <laughs> we talk about this a lot, that when we podcast, we are so amped up. And then the afterwards, it's like we need to have a scheduled nap because it's just yes. very draining. So we love doing this podcast, but it is, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of, um, just being on, which is, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Hard. And hard. I wanted to just update you on one thing because the last time we were together, I had finished a sweater, but I hadn't blocked it. And I thought people would be interested to see the before and after of a blocked sweater. Does that okay. seem worth sharing? It seems I'm pretty sure you're going to do it. Okay. So this is the Extra Texture by Stephen West. Yeah. Wow. And it's knit in a lot of farmer's daughter fibers. The color I think is like willow or something. Yeah. I will like put my project. I'm going to just quick slip it on because it really, because it's super wash, it dropped a lot. Yeah, which we were concerned about what was yeah. happening. With so I sleeping. just want you to see what it looks like now. Like, I love it with the plaid. I know. <laughs> That's an extra texture going there. <laughs> exactly. But so there it good. is. But so it's good. good. Beautiful. Oh and it, is, it achieved the warm that I wanted. I, I do feel like this would be one you'd be borrowing if you were here. I, I yeah. But do you see how long the sleeves got? They got yes, that perfect length. Yeah, really. So I didn't need yeah. to, I didn't do any changes. I just blocked it and I didn't aggressively block it. It was just yeah. gravity and water. Well, and mohair, I think, does that. And super wash. Yeah, totally. Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I put this on, and which, by the way, I should just at least mention, for those of you who oh, don't yeah. know the sweater, um, this is the Ready uh, by Anka Strick. And mm -hmm. I've talked about it at nauseum on this podcast. But it is still an all-time favorite. I knit it with um, Ritual Dyes. Um, and there, I think it was the Hematite colorway and did her mm -hmm. mohair, too. But I absolutely love the sweater can't get enough of it and if you need it like these two are the perfect comfort knits yeah you know comfort and, knit comfort wear um so beautiful but anyway that's what i that's what i have on in case people are like what is it and we always always um update our ravelry even if it's jackie who has to update my ravelry page though she hasn't done that in a while um and we always have show notes ample show notes in the little yeah, down, down below so all of that information is there. So please check that before you send us a message because usually we have it posted somewhere. But anyway, so should we? Um, yeah, it feels like we're talking about finished objects. Yeah, I well, I have a little one I could share. Okay, yeah, let's see it. Okay, so um, I had, oops, I did a gift knit for James because I, I, think right. was, I don't know if it was two years ago I knit him a hat and it was kind of, it didn't really work well for him so i've been uh wanting to knit him um like the perfect sort of fisherman rib hat mm -hmm. and you're gonna laugh at when you see my um my head form oh so i have this vintage brass i think it's a doll form do you see those eyelashes anyway mm -hmm. um, so i knit and i've got fuzzies all over it i tried to anyway it's the welded hat um, by Fiber for the People. It's a free pattern. Oh, I did want to show one thing. Um, it's a free pattern. Um, and I, it, it called for Aaron weight, um, but I just uh, doubled, um, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, I did uh, Brooklyn Tweed Loft. Brooklyn Tweed Loft? 
Brooklyn Tweed. Brooklyn Tweed. Sorry. Yeah, you didn't do loft. I think you did Peary. No. Sorry, Brooklyn Tweed Peary. Um, in there, I had to look that up. I have it on the floor. Anyway, I wanted to show you the um, the decreases. I don't know if it'll show up or not. There we go. So Jackie and I worked through this together, or I should say Jackie worked through this. So it's got kind of a swirled um, decrease. Uh, I'll show it on top, I'm wearing it. But because um, I didn't love the decreases in the pattern, they just weren't neat enough for me. And so we worked on doing center double decreases, but I have to say, I love the hat. Cute. It's, I saw James wore it on Christmas Eve. He did. And he put it on. I could tell it was like the perfect hat for him. But what's Does really, he have a face when he likes something? He just makes it known that he doesn't hate it. <laughs> you look adorable. <laughs> I like it. And he, I keep wearing it. And he's like, that's my hat. Um, but it is a great hat because you can wear it sort of, you know, you can oh, do that. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Or like, how cute am I, you know, and or you can yeah. twist it. Um, but what's really nice about the design is you knit it um, on smaller needles. This was on fours for about three inches. So it's really dense. And then you go to sevens. So it's, um, here we go. Oh, now we can see the decreases really well, I think. Yeah, see, you can see they kind of swirl through. Um, there we go. Yeah. Anyway, um, where did I put the... Yeah, so it's Brooklyn Tree, Tweed Peary. I did have the ball bands. I just dropped it and then rolled away. But um, you can see it's this beautiful sort of midnighty blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never worked with Peary before, but it is so bouncy and lovely. You and I had a little discussion about Brooklyn Tweed, and this is worsted spun, correct? I think that's what it's yeah. called. Anyway, it's super where bouncy. it's plied and springy and yeah. looks good with cables. Yeah. Anyway, so I did um I did use two balls and have about this much left of each one and then I have this full skein. So I'm thinking I might make um just right. fingerless mitts. What you, what might you make? Like fingerless mitts? Oh yeah. I don't know. They're just, it, it's the texture of this rib doubled up is so lovely. It has that kind of brioche squish to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's beautiful. Anyway, nice. so that's my finished object. And um, it was a little stressful because I had two gift knits I was trying to do and neither one seemed to work really well. And I left James to the very last minute. <laughs> I woke up at 630 in the morning on Christmas day and finally bound off. So I, it did make it to the tree on time. You made it. Made it. No, to sell. Do gift knits a lot earlier. Um, I have a gift knit hat myself. Let's see it. So this oh. is the Hedera hat. Beautiful. And it has, um, it's in the Daylights by Harrisville, which we'll have more to say about. But that's a brioche brim. Beautiful. And... Then it had, I just, I think it had really beautiful cable with bobbles pattern and everything. Yeah, and it really, when you talk about yarn that's good for cables, that's it right there. Yeah. So this yarn is the yarn, maybe I'll just talk about it now, but I just want to talk about the hat a minute. It was just, it's just gorgeous. My issue with it is, it might, you know, my mother, um, my mother wanted it. It just, I feel like I needed to knit it one needle size smaller for it to be the way I want it to fit. Oh, what size did you knit it on? Whatever it said, maybe sevens or something or sixes. I don't remember, yeah. but I would go down. Yeah. But very pretty. It's very pretty. Can, can I see it on, like it's meant to be cuffed, right? Right, yeah. Oh. I don't know about like a brioche, the properties of brioche if it's as springy as an actual rib or just if it just looks like rib do you know I don't actually yeah, I don't know yeah it seems so um but she just did, loves it did you I mean it is glorious between the brim and the rest of it yes yes I did you size down there it is so soft it is ridiculously soft and this is woolen spun though I mean can you I would like a full yeah. sweater in this and we yeah. have, we're going to show you a bunch of this yarn and patterns to go with this yarn later in the podcast, but it feels 
divine. I mean, this has that quality and same with the Stephen West. There's yeah. something about, you know, cables are one thing as like a design element. That's one thing. Yeah. But just as like a sensual how they feel. Yes. Piece. Totally. It, it just, it, it feels so good. It's yeah. not hand knit cables, which are very flat and, you know, they have less dimension. I mean, look at all the dimension yeah. there. So I really want to have in 2021 mm -hmm. a cable along. I would love that. Yeah. And so I think, you know, we could have it like a six month cable along yeah. and kick it off in some fun way in January. Um, and because I can do this, Caitlin, I'm going to check. I, I can share my screen on Zoom. I want to try this for just a yeah, second. Sure. Do you mind? We'll see if I, if I, but I feel like, um, let's see. I feel like I put it up there. Okay. You're seeing something like scheduling made easy, aren't you? Yeah. But here's our Instagram. And earlier on Instagram, I put together this post. There it is. Do you, can you see this, Caitlin? Yeah, I can see it. You know, here's just a few. Mm -hmm. yeah right there's just become more and more and more right i know because i have one that i the day the daylights put out some pattern designs there's definitely yes one. and i have that too maybe we'll go to that but there's just a That's few that we put out and here i'll show you the one that caitlin's talking about so since we're on daylights this is all of the designs excuse me that they um put together for the yarn and yeah. this is one that Caitlin is just loving right here. Yeah. It is stunning. I'm going to go to yeah. look yeah, at that. I know. I love that sort of bib of Russell. It's Russell's. so romantic. Yeah, it's amazing. And then there's the sleeves. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Caitlin. I know, right? Like I, I have, I have a sweaters quantity of this yarn, and looking at this picture, I know makes you want to start it today yeah we we should talk about the properties of this yarn because it is really amazing can you um do you yes do you, can you go i will because it will. is truly spectacular yarn and so much effort goes into creating this yarn i mean it is really magical i think in a lot of ways it's um, let me stop sharing for a second um, so here's the little there's a little booklet that we have the so Firefly Fiber has all of this yarn and she sponsored, whoa, sorry for the loud noises. Whoa. <laughs> so the nightshades earlier, which we've knit in, um, that was the previous year. And then this is Daylights and it's um, American Cormo. Yeah. And what they've done, and I, I don't have the technical details, Caitlin. I'm going to look it up while you talk about that. Okay, I'm just going to show you some of the colors. So this, and I'm hoping my light is good enough this morning for you to see it. This is Chirp. So you'll notice that it has a soft bluish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are the, these are subtle and they so grow on you. Like I absolutely love Chirp. Love it. Yes, the chirp is beautiful. I mean, um, they're all so subtle, but they really do have enough sort of pop of color that it does pull through. Um, this one's called 826, and it has, a, you can see, I can see the green, and it kind of looks oh, yeah. like your prints right behind you. Yeah, no, it definitely has sort of a, uh, that one I feel like has more of an all over color tone to it than some of the others where it's more of just a fleck. That one to me has like, a minty green aspect to it. So this yeah. one's called Over Easy and it has a yellow and gray. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing it in the camera very well, but I'm seeing it very well on here. Yeah. No, you can see. Yeah. Well, you can see the yellow yeah. like in there. It's so yeah. they're so romantic. And here we have lint which is a little bit of a purplish gray I love that. that's one of my favorite ones they're I think, all so well good. I, or maybe it's not lint it's the one that definitely has the purple in it is that and plumbing? the last one i have here is caffeine and i i think caffeine is just sort of a little bit brownish black and white god they're incredible yeah like, look at them next to this shawl they just they're very painterly yeah, can very I, subtle. I found um, their description. Can I read it? Yes, please. Okay. 
so this is, I'm just on the Harrisfield um, Designs Instagram page and they say um, the daylight is a companion to our beloved nightshades. It's sunshine, it, it's sunshine counterparts daylight spun from the same springy Montana Cormo wool, perfect for a heavy wear garment or a light accessory developed from the hues cast by the sun crossing the horizon, breathing life into everything it touches. Yeah. I mean, can't be more poetic than that. No. <laughs> Beautiful. So we had a, an Instagram giveaway about a month ago and we gave, and I think she's starting it. I think it was her Christmas cast on. Yeah. Um, Alisa from Firefly Fibers um, offered a skein of this yarn and then we got the hat by Whitney Hayward. Mm -hmm. And we want to do that again here today. So um, just leave a comment. We'll tell you what to comment about. I think, you know, a great comment to keep it really simple. I have no idea. You know, it's the end of the year. <laughs> Well, maybe, I, a, I mean, maybe people could actually go to the Harrisville site and look at the colors and comment which one's their favorite. I mean, I think it's just, it's so beautiful. And I think yeah. it's worth looking at. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting to see what people are drawn to. Um, yeah. And the other thing that Elisa has done, which I think is really smart, is she's done um, these sample kits too, where she does a small um, portion of each skein in every color. So it'd be great to just get one of those and yes. try it out. Um, it is one of those th things that it's so subtly beautiful, but you can't go wrong with any of them, but I would love to hear what people's um, favorites are. Well, that's perfect. Yeah. So either your favorite color or your favorite design, and I'll put a link to both in the show notes, mm -hmm. then you, you have to do a little research, but then you'll fall in love. Perfect. Worth this it. is one of those yarns though that you have to see in you have to see it in person it's the feel and the subtle beauty it's it's exquisite yeah and it's you, very alive yes yeah. so so we just feel so thrilled that we can oh my goodness like this is each one of them i bring them in and i'm just like oh yeah so and anyway the point is Go, go look that up and then we're happy to, you know, offer you a gateway to with the hat and the skein of yarn because yeah. it'll just lead you right into a sweater's quantity. And you'd be all set up to join our, our uh, cable along in 2021. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and your yarn was from Firefly too for James's hat. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. She, uh, Lisa carries the entire Brooklyn Tweed um, line, so go nowhere else. She, she has it all. Um, well, and that's the thing about this particular daylight and nightshades would be incredible for color work together. Oh, for sure. Like some DK color work thing. So yeah. that's, yeah. and one of the patterns that we showed you in the link, if you explore it, is a tunic, a color work tunic that's really lovely. Yeah. As well. yeah. We have some shawl designs and yeah, there's some great designs. Yes. As all their, th all their launches are so good. So I have another FO, but will you just give me a second to clean up? Because <laughs> it's not like I, I take the yarn and I'm like, woo, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, you're good. Um, all right. You're, you're moving on to your FO. Yes. So Caitlin, when she came on, she said, show me your shawl. And I refused to show it to her because I needed They're controlling to... in case you can't figure that out. Um, I never get what I want. <laughs> you, get, you just have delayed. I, I, ooh, I was about to say something inappropriate, Caitlin. Wow. Poor play. That's, I'll say that much. Perfect. So I'm I know ready. how to extend your pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> she, said, okay. she said so oh, herself. This right? is so special because while you've seen this shawl before, maybe when you um, met Debbie Korb this summer for our knitting camp, mm -hmm. she had made this shawl by Moonstruck Knits, who we worship and want to knit everything she's ever designed. Um, yes, we do. 
<laughs> but Debbie had three skeins left left over of this yarn, and we could and we couldn't find it anywhere else. We looked all over. I even started writing people on Ravelry who had it in their stash, not for sale, mind you. I just wrote them and was like, "Hi, hi, friendly hi. knitter from Wisconsin. Do you have?" It? <laughs> but Are I you actually to give up stash. Yeah, yeah, because. People have done that with me and I'm sure. fine with that. You know, you can always say no. Anyways, couldn't find it anywhere. And then Catherine from Bed of Roses, who lives in North. Love Catherine. She sent us the most magnificent gifts ever. Her beautiful bags, which I have right here. So here's the bag that I received. Yeah, you and I got matching bags. And that's a Marameco pattern fabric, which... Yeah, and then her beautiful jewelry. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, and it's stamped with little... They're just such treasures. I actually, I won't go off topic, but <clears throat> I am going to go slightly off topic. I hope you don't mind. You Not know, I'm, I'm an Please. elementary school teacher. And I was just thinking how glorious, not nearly as exquisite, but like milder versions of these would be for children for to wear as totems to reward, you know, when they have a goal and they can have one of these added each time they reach their goal, like I mastered my times three facts or I got my homework done or whatever, because yeah. there's just something so absolutely tactile and desirable about these things they're so fun to play with and to to, to want and you want to earn them and see them and whatever i just i adore her work so if you, the one that's hanging on your zipper because that's my favorite one. Oh, okay let's see of course it's my favorite the little bird the little bird um it's not cooperating <laughs> there we go there we go it's so oh, cute good. They don't usually cooperate, they fly away. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so she sent, she found and sent me the other three skeins. So it's in, it's Tove, Sundiskarn, and Coral, which is discontinued. And let me just say that when I blocked this last night, it was 10 feet long. 10. Before. That was before blocking. That or no, was, I you know I pinned the pico, and oh. this edge right here is ten feet long. That is insane. How many stitches were did you have to pico? It was something like six hundred and forty-three. So this is the mayor shawl, and oh. it is absolutely <laughs> divine. It is. It's, oh my god it's 10 I mean, feet long it looks so good it oh. is so good Please stand up so we can see the edge of it and the oh my gosh look so at that i uh and it's not very deep which is kind of nice no too. it's nice that it's not very deep oh we call those the pretzels right <laughs> yeah so it has this exquisite pico edge this is um oh What's that kind of mosaic knitting? Yeah. And yeah. texture. This first bit of texture goes really fast. And then I, I think I saw, you know, sometimes people maybe finish here because this is, these are the rows I timed myself. I included my little distractions and one row was 36 minutes. That's, I, to, sorry, but that's not a long time. I feel that that's a very long time. <laughs> Anyways, can you believe this thing? It's unbelievable. That edge is so spectacular. So oh. this has been, I started this in mid-November and I finished on Christmas Day. Beautiful. And I, I love You're it. You're in love with yourself. I can tell. I am that. in love with it and I'm in love with it. And it has a theme song and I'll put it on Instagram. I just love it, it so much. Song? Yes, but I can't play it here because it will, uh, you know. It'll make our video, you oh, know, right. put a block on our whole video. So, so you'll just have to go find it on Instagram. But so is that the longest shawl you have? 
I mean, is it is it equivalent to like birds of a feather? Do you think? Because that's really long. Too. Yeah, it's really long like that. And I I just want to say, so I now have these are the two from summer. So yeah. you know, in fact, this is all all Debbie Corb right here. I'm like, yes, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> the Debbie Corb corner. <laughs> so. Um, um, but I just I mean I want to highlight again that that this is Moonstruck Knits Natasha Hornby. She is an absolute design genius. Yes, I mean every every shawl she has designed has been a true pleasure to knit. Yes, we both knit her Letho cardigan, which I have to say I, I debated wearing that today. Yes, um, she's I mean she's just I I don't know if I had to pick a designer of 2020 Natasha would be it. Yes. Well, that's our other knit along is that we want to do with Dinah from the knitting place. Yes. yes. Is a Moonstruck Knits knit along. Yes. So for 2021. So we're just previewing these things here, but it would be any pattern for sure. And we'll figure it out. Yeah. Because I still have, um, well, I have a Cirrus just waiting for me as yeah. well. Yeah. And I just, we all know this, but let's just talk about the shawl for a minute. And how deeply romantic shawls are. They are. I, just, I think for me, it's about wearing a hug. <laughs> you know, it's like wearing an embrace. You and know, a fantasy. Sure. I mean, they just, you, because it, where some people struggle, like, how do I wear this? How do I, um, um, you know, how do I do this? I, I think you just put it on and it's just, it's all about flair and embracing that um if know. clothes could dance they would be shawls right shawls and skirts because it has movement and drape yeah i i hear do you hear the background my lovely husband is doing dishes which is oh great. what a good boy i'm gonna close the door <laughs> oh okay um okay yes yeah, so who does dishes how lucky am i I have the only thing on my needles now is my half and half triangle wrap. I'm sure by the time you upload this video, you'll have three other things on your needles. You can <laughs> you, Jackie, don't you worry. Well, it's just weird because I haven't really, you know, we'll talk I'm, about that. Like what yeah. some of the things we're thinking about knitting next. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, that is just glorious. It does make me want to knit it. What color would you do? Oh, I don't know. But it's I mean, so fabulous. You the, have, I, I, let me just rephrase this. You have to knit this, Caitlin. Not just, it makes me want to. It's a must knit. Okay. Because it's so, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to knit. There's not, you know, yeah. the, only un, the only unpleasant thing about it is if you're busy thinking, I should be done already. Is that what you were thinking? Yes. Yes, we had a lot, we had a lot of therapy sessions to get you through this. <laughs> I'm going to knit it by Saturday. I'm gonna. It's like, how about you just knit? Just I know. be in the moment. I, I do try to talk her down from the edge, people. I do. Well, here's the thing. I will put in another plug for being mildly monogamous, though, because yeah. it, it's just that I this season so many since November 16th when I started this, so many sweaters came out, yeah. and I discovered a new designer and. And I just have like flushes of desire, you know, and then, but I can't act on them because I'm still knitting this and still knitting this. Yeah. And then it's so funny because then I look back and go, oh, I would have knit that. I would have knit. So it's just strange to the abundance of possibilities out there and how you have to stick with the one you chose. Well, and there's little, it feels like there's so little time because by the time you get to the thing you've been wanting to get to, there's five or six other things that are distracting you from that. I mean, isn't that amazing how you can create these make nines or my list for 2020, you know, whatever it is. And I mean, how, how quickly can it become derailed by the next pattern and the next pattern? And, and I was, we've been, um, you know, you and I both posted sort of our top nines from 2020, but I, I couldn't limit it to that. I mean, it felt right. a little bit like picking your favorite child. You I know. know. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, and then when I was thinking about, I think I put something together for you about some of the things I was thinking about knitting mm -hmm. next. 
and oh, they're beautiful. And then you know you put it together, and it's like, oh, but I forgot that and that and that. So and mm -hmm. then it just changes. So yeah. yeah. Well, it's, um, it's, I don't know what colors I would knit it, but I would definitely. I love the stripe quality to it. I love that it has you know, the floral motif. I love the little checker. This yarn was really good too. It was very yeah. like, very rustic and toothy as you were knitting yeah. it and it softened beautifully when you blocked it. And it's not expensive yarn either. Not at all, no. Especially if somebody gives it to you. <laughs> well, that's the thing, like it's, it's Debbie and Catherine and yeah. you know, Natasha all here. And I it's know. Just like, and the, I admire the three of them. They're all, they all have such deep, style and aesthetics and grace so yeah. it's just like i love the association yeah well i think that that goes back to what you were talking about how um romantic shawl knitting is mm -hmm. I, I think in some ways it's an easy fashion um risk if you will to mm -hmm. wear something that maybe doesn't feel like your style or that you can really own it and it, a shawl is so easy to get away with because, you know, you can throw it over a coat and it doesn't have to be the outfit you're wearing all day. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a risk for some people. They feel mm -hmm. like they can pull it off, but that's one other thing. Like you can be whoever you want to be in that beautiful shawl. Well, I have this idea too that like, I don't know if you guys ever knew that I went to Chicago and I was wearing this and I dropped it on, yeah. I think it was Michigan Avenue. And it was like the day, it was the day that Joe Biden was announced the winner of the election. And so there were thousands of people down. I mean, thousands and thousands of people. Sorry, I mean, I had a mask on, but I wanted to see what was going on. <laughs> but I dropped it on the sidewalk, right down by the river. And I... <laughs> <laughs> well, and it was you. What well, you weren't wearing it, right? It no, I had it in, like I had it in my bag, and it fell yeah. out of my bag onto the sidewalk, and I couldn't believe it. But I walked back, and there it was. Oh my gosh, you're so. And you had to walk back quite a distance too, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And but nobody, like everybody, was in another place or something. Yeah. But I imagine like your shawls, sort of being like perfume like a fragrance that announce you without you being there like I, I feel like they take on a lot of your quality yeah. so I think to myself like if you walk into a room and you see this shawl and then you know oh that was that's Caitlin's she's here <laughs> and you know what I, there's right. something like a calling card about them that yeah. I think is very beautiful too well the other thing too um that I did I think with while knitting this is I did spray it with some perfume mm. and and every time I picked it up it was just this sensual enjoyable tactile thing and mm. um and I and I actually like doing I mean some people are very sensitive to smell but you could yeah. you know sort of spritz it with some you know some type of oil or you know that's your Margaret trick right Yes, yes well, Margaret, <laughs> she goes, go big or go home. But yeah, I think that that's another thing about really embracing the romantic side of your knits and just making it a completely sensual thing. Yeah, I think Moonstruck knits with her jewelry and then with scent. I got this. I just want to show this off. Yeah, the Joe Malone. Yes, Osmanthus Blossom Cologne because Caitlin has this shrub. But she, and when she but she says it doesn't, it's it not doesn't smell like But her. it's still beautiful. Oh yeah, it is really nice. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. All right. Oh, um, so good. So, do you have anything else to share about that or do you want to move on? Mm, no, I guess not. Okay, because so I, I have a couple whips. Oh, yeah, let's see your whips, Caitlin. Okay, so I want to get one whip out of the way because it's sort of, I just thought I'd mention it and- You want to whip it out? Well, it's sort of an epic fail. So one of my other gift knits um, was for my daughter, Isabella, who doesn't care for wool. She's very sensitive. So I think it's, I don't know, that's really an allergy, more so just the, the um, texture of it. So she, I can never really knit or anything. Um, but then this time she um, was like, how about something out of cotton? So we did a little search for, you know, big and bulky cotton and we came up with 
loopy mangoes, big cotton. Mm -hmm. And Isabella picked the, um, she picked the pattern and she picked the color. Um, and I don't know if it will. It's not looking yet as glorious as it really is. I mean, it's trying, I mean, it's- it kind of blows out, but it's got yeah. such a beautiful sheen. It's a beautiful, it, the color is avocado. So it's a beautiful deep green, which I, I think Ruby Mango does unbelievably beautiful greens. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and we picked a pattern that actually Lily knit. It was Mr. Pocket's um, bomber jacket, I think is what it was called. And because um, she, she wanted really an oversized thing. Problem is, it's just too drapey. It's just not quite the right yarn for the right, for the pattern. Um, but I just wanted to give a shout out to Loopy Mango. If you are looking for an unbelievable cotton, this is it. It is so soft. It is so drapey. Mm -hmm. And it's just you know, if this doesn't work out for Isabella, I have plans for myself, let's just say. Um, but anyway, I just want to, it, it's beautiful. So now we're looking for a different pattern. I think Jackie might have landed on something that was. Um, it was the cute, cute yeah. girls. Yeah, they well, did. from. Um, it's so. Knit. Yeah, Jess and um, Erica. Had yeah, knit so it's the, Jess. What? Je no, they, they both knit it. Oh, because I, I looked in Ravelry, so it's the it's um, Park and Knit, Park and Park Knit, Williams, Park Williams, and the design. I can't remember what the design was called. I'm really I'm trying to help her. I know you're not helping. Anyway, anyway, we're we'll, we're we'll, we'll, I'll keep you posted. But mm -hmm. um, the yarn is an absolute dream to work with. I, I've never I don't think I've ever really knit with cotton. Um, but it's it's considered oh beautiful. it's beautiful it's just, oh there that color right there is pretty yeah good. that's pretty good um, um so I saw the knitting loft do a podcast featuring that yarn this yep. summer and the the daughter she knit Maria. this beautiful little Maria. eye sweater yeah Maria. Mm -hmm. yeah it was gorgeous yeah which by the way I um knitting loft is having a their um, Boxing Day sale right now. So I actually, I, I can segue into, well, I did buy something today, but anyway. Go for talking. it, Caitlin. Segue well, today. okay. So on our sort of, we were talking about sort of dream knitting and things we have planned and um, you got a copy of this. Mm -hmm. So if any of you have not familiar with this, you crawl out from under the rock because <laughs> This is so beautiful. Making magazine and this color, everything is. Um, did you already talk about this? No. Oh, everything in this um, magazine is all about this beautiful sort of goldenrod color. And one of the things that is on my queue to knit are these late bloomer mitts. Mm -hmm. And I'm planning to do them as a gift knit for somebody. Um, so I just ordered some yarn from the Knitting Loft today. Mm. That was, um, I'm really excited. It's um, Durera Matura, Durera, how do you say mm -hmm. that? Matura? Mm -hmm. um, they're Ulysses, which is a sport weight yarn. And which then I also incredible. got- um, I can show the yarn because I have it. Oh, you have Ulysses? Okay. Um, and then I did, the original pattern is in, um, by Lichen and Lace and her sport weight and her Marsh Mohair, but I was, most of that is out, but I was able to find the Marsh Mohair color. Um, anyway, so this is, this is top of my list um, to knit. I wonder if you got the color I have. Oh, maybe. Oh, yes. That's exactly the color. That's so This fun. is for my theorists. That's so funny that, yes, I love seeing it in person. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. Beautiful. That's, since, yeah. if you don't mind me just flashing the pattern. Too, it's so cool. Yeah. Here's, here's Cirrus. That's not a very. Oh yeah. Another Moonstruck. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So right there. Yep. That's so funny that, yeah, so that's the color. And then I got the mohair that was originally, um, I think it's called Amber, but this magazine nice. is so beautiful. The other thing that's just, I mean, just when you talk about aesthetics, everything in this magazine, even the ads um, are, let me just find some, are, you know, color coordinated. I mean, how beautiful is that? 
Um, so the yeah, I know. And there are the colors we love. I know. I mean, it's just, I mean, look at it. It's just, this is a beautiful magazine. So anyway, this is one of my um, gifts to myself from Firefly Fiber. So thank you, Elisa. Um, and I will say while I'm on the topic of Firefly, the other things that I gifted myself was these, a couple of cocoa knits things. I'm sure everybody's seen these by now, but they're... Um, I haven't. You haven't seen these? Mm -mm. Oh, so first of all, it's a, it's a needle gauge mm -hmm. and it's adorable. So we all know how I feel about things that are adorable. Yes. Um, and so each one is a different, has it labeled for which size needle and then mm -hmm. it's magnetic. So if you have one of those needle keep things, it will. Cute. And then you turned me on to this, the stitch fixer. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, this is a dream come true. It's double-sided little mm -hmm. crochet hook mm -hmm. that you can use to fix your knits, nice. which I've gotten really a lot of experience doing lately. Um, so I um, let me show another magazine pattern. Okay. And by the way, but I, let me go back to, I feel like you've really come a long way with all of your fixing of your knits and embracing that as part of the process. Thank you. It is true. You have to sort of, I did a lot of, well, on my next knit doll show, I did a lot of ripping out. Ripping back. Oh yeah. Cause we're still on whips, but I still, since you got I a, a magazine, I just need to share this. Yeah, that's fun. I don't think it's showing up very well, but I love it. It's from Amarisu and it's yeah. Akimi. So that's you. better. I mean, so I, you. right. I have to knit that. That's fringe. Yes. Wow. I I just don't have yarn for it currently because it. I'm sure you can figure that part out. <laughs> I know. Like, I. What a, what's a girl to do? I actually I love the color from Clinton Hill Cashmere, the Yolo, the yellow, mm -hmm. but I feel like this is actually calls for a more rustic yarn than oh. cashmere. Wow. Though, I will have to do another cashmere project this year since it's one of those big birthday years. Oh, 40? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, okay, back to your whips. Okay, back to my whips. So, uh, off camera here, I am beyond thrilled to mm -hmm. have started and made significant progress on my plum. Oh, just stay there. And the color's pretty good. It's really gorgeous, Caitlin. Isn't that amazing? Uh, so Did you put it over your head or not enough? No, I can definitely put it over my head. Okay. Um, I just kind of want to see it on you because you can now. Oh, Caitlin. Oh my God. Oh my God. So. I will let you speak, but I need to say something about how exquisite that is on you. And see, this is, this is the, the pinnacle of knitting is when you pick the yarn and the yeah. pattern and it suits you. I mean, that is so stunning on you. Thank stunning. You. Oh my God. I know it's this beautiful, I, I want to say it's fig color. That's not the name of it, mm -hmm. um, but it is this gray, lavendery purple um and it's of course one of our absolute favorite yarns. can i interrupt one more time yeah that's another thing you do really well is you have more restraint than i have and you wait and you wait and you wait which can be a pain in the ass for me occasionally yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand when you hit buy you know it, that it's like what you want and it's right you and you're so good at that Thank you. Well, yes, I, and Jackie has had many years to suffer through my non-purchases. Yes, and make up for it. Yes. Um, so this is um, this is Midori. Um, no, Junko Okamoto. Okamoto. Who we're doing a Junko in January now. Yeah, we're anything any any month that begins with J. Start it, finish it's it. It's Junko Okamoto. <laughs> exactly. So um, I think. Did Keep going. In July. June or July? I don't know which we did, but I did the bouquet this summer. Yeah. I think it was so, June. Yeah. So this is a challenging pattern, I will say, but 
I know people look at this and go, oh my gosh, no way, no way. I feel like I represent the regular people. I really do. Okay. So I'm just going to encourage you. Um, this is, um, you know, you, yes, you knit it on small needles, but you really, you just take it stitch by stitch. And if Jackie has taught me anything, it is how to use stitch markers so they are your friend. Mm -hmm. So basically you're just putting stitch markers at every, you know, I think it's, a, it was a 17 stitch um, repeat, just put it every 17 stitches. And so you make sure that whatever you're doing within that 17 is the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's beautiful lace work, there's beautiful color work. Um, and I've just separated for sleeves and done with the color work and done with the lace work. And so really the only other detail that's going to be sort of, you know, the, the challenge of it is this beautiful cable that runs down the sleeve and runs down the side of the sweater. So um, I'm, I'm knitting it out of La Bienna May Modim, which again is one of our absolute favorite yarns. It definitely has sort of a rustic quality to it. Um, this color is called um, Pume. And then my light color color work was a gift um, left over from Jackie in the Sansa colorway. She Which is her. the main color for my plum. Yeah, hers is, is so it's this beautiful sort of pinky. Um, I am helical knitting. So I am switching every row, uh, which I think is really important because even with even within the switching, this yarn, you can see it, it definitely has lighter, darker qualities. So mm -hmm. it is so squishy and light. It, it's just going to be a dream. So I am super excited for this because this has been on my list. Actually, I think when I went on Instagram for the first time, yes. is the first sweater that I saved um, wanting to knit. So, I mean, it's been several years. And so Sometimes the things in your queue do actually come up and get yeah. hit. Yeah. So it's I'm exquisite. Really happy about that. And um, your color choices are amazing. I'm really looking forward to wearing it. And the thing that I love about the design is it's reversible. So it's got this, it had, definitely yeah. has a wide neckline. It has this V, but then it's got sort of a boat neck style too. So you can flip it around. And it's, she's, she's a genius. A mm -hmm. genius. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah. If you haven't knit one of her patterns, they're they're definitely worth taking on. Her her patterns are thirty pages long, which mm -hmm. means that she's literally writing out line by line what you're supposed to do, or yeah. row by row. So the, you know, there's something to be said for that too. That when it become when it is a complicated knit, to have really exquisite pattern makes all the difference. It makes yeah. it so approachable. Yeah, um, I was. Bright and Twig are still two that I like burning to be knit for me and yeah. might possibly, we'll see. Who knows? Yeah, I love the Twig one too. Bright is, Bright has it's a All white of one with the texture. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I was just gonna say uh, back to the stitch markers for a second. I nice. use them throughout here too. You know, it's a beautiful way for instance, if you're doing a stripe, which is a bitch to get off, get, yeah. if you get off on a stripe when you have hundreds and hundreds of stitches. Yes. So if you make sections when you're setting up your stripe or your rib and just go, okay, every 20, I'm gonna throw in a stitch marker, then you will know you're not off. Totally. Because you'll know, okay, it begins in white, it ends in orange, or whatever it is. It begins right. in a knit, ends in a pearl. And so it's so worth the time to pop yeah. in a stitch marker. And I and I have those boxes that I love of the little hexagons. Hexagons, ones. yeah, those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. We gave some of those away once. Yes, yeah, we did. Uh, Can I talk about another little creative thing that I did? Yeah, and I'm sorry I keep saying, um, go for it, Caitlin. Um, Okay. I know. Right. Yeah, Localized so pause. <laughs> yeah, so no comments of, uh, but Ooh, I just, I, whatever. <laughs> Welcome to the um podcast where we work um into everything we say and do. Do you like that? If, if only it were ohm, then we would oh, be well, you know, inviting in the universal experience of oneness. Yeah. That's what we're doing when we do that. That's we what we're doing. It's very totally. intentional. Um, okay, go ahead, dear. Well, I feel like I have been on this 
uh, creative kick where my brain, I think um, this year for a lot of people, the year of COVID has been a hard year to feel creative because there's so much going on in our lives and, and all of that. But I, I don't know what it is, but I, I feel like I've been nesting in creativity, um, but I've had a lot of, I guess part of it is that I have a lot of time. I'm not working right now. So um, I feel extremely lucky to sort of have space to around being creative. And I've been wanting to do some weavings for a long time. And you and I bought, well, we didn't buy this together, but do you remember my adorable weaving kit that um, I bought in Madison? The store is called Good Day Shop. Shop. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure she's still hopefully around and selling. She's around. She's doing a great job on Instagram. Yeah. So I bought one of these adorable mini looms. Um, she sells them online and they have a lot of different colors and it comes with all the tools. And I have had this sort of, you know, in my, I don't know if you call it a stash, but in my creative stash for a long time and never have done anything with it. it was, no. Yeah, I think it was last year there was, uh, we did, we participated in a group Cal about yeah. learn something new, remember? Yeah. And yeah. you were going to do it then. I was going to do it. So I will just say, this is my first weaving. And I know for any of you who are out, oh, you want to say something? I just, it's just like the plum. I'm freaking out on how magnificent it is that your time, you are doing all the things you set out to do, just not exactly in the immediate time frame. True. They're happy. So um, I will just say that I, I did a lot of YouTubing of weaving and how to do it. I, have, I had one of my list of things to do before I moved away or knew I was going to move away was to take one of Melissa Jenkins weaving classes. Mm -hmm. um, and I never was able to do that. So of course I'm wishing I had because I would have done a much better job. But anyway, I took a lot of my scraps, mm. mostly knit collage scraps mm. and just and just the things that made me happy and wove them in. So like one of my favorite things is one of her little yes. uh, pop the daisies and um, uh, and like, look at the, look at the. Oh, I know it's exquisite. You no, know, all of her little embellishments. So what I will say is the top had, needs some work because I was basically going with what I had at home. I wasn't about to order, you know, the right thread or for the warp and weave and whatever. And so I used the wrong kind of um, thread and it was too silky. And when I finished it off, it just sort of broke apart. But so we're gonna do some embellishing at the top and winging it. But I just took a, a twig I found in, you know, in my neighborhood and just added all these fun little things to it. And all I can say is this is such a great way to use up those little bits that you just don't, I mean, I never throw away anything. That's a little bit of, a little bit Do of you an keep end. holding it weeks where we can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's Nick collage in here. There's Manas del El Uruguay. I'm sure I butchered that. Um, this is Crayo yarn. I mean, it just has little mm -hmm. bits of lots of different things. Um, and I did not weave in my ends. We'll call that. A that would right be now. such a great Christmas present. Wouldn't it? I mean, it just, it just, you, but you could do it in so many ways. You can make little ornaments. You can do tiny things. You can do bigger things. But anyway, this just gave me so much pleasure. Um, I will, it will not be my last weaving, um, but I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I can't say enough about all the little knit collage bits you have left. Like this is beyond yeah. perfect. I that feel was, inspired to put on the knit collage because I don't feel like we've had an ep like we had a special knit collage episode, but those yeah. people who just, you know, didn't tune into that, didn't tune in. I'm gonna put this on. Oh. So, so this was the fall knit along. Yes, and it just wrapped up, right? I think in early December. Yep. So, th this was um amazing. So fun to do. I wonder what it this looks fine with these pants. <laughs> of but, course it does. Oh, it's right? so good. So like, good. I love it with these sleeves. I know. It's like the uh the puffy sleeve episode from Seinfeld. The puffy sleeve. I don't watch Seinfeld, but Caitlin can't get over that. <laughs> um so Nick good. Lodge. Nick Clodge right. can't say enough. <laughs> right. I could just I Sorry, I didn't mean to get derailed, but when no, it's just, beautiful. 
It's like wearing. <laughs> weaving. I know. It kind of, it does look kind of woven. Yeah. It feels so party-like. It's like, so amazing. I was, so amazing. there have been no parties, but. No, but, no parties. Anyways. Um, um, excellent. Beautiful. Okay. So I have some yarn to share. So do you have anything else you, I feel like it's, you want to talk about? No, I'm going to pin you and I'll be right back. You share your yarn. What does that mean? I just, I have to, well, let me just take this off. Okay. Jen, off. okay, fine. So I just wanted to show some yarn that I got a while ago. I was hoping to show it unwound, but we didn't podcast. And so I'm just going to lean over to pick it up. Um, it's a few amazing skeins to share. Um, so when we were in New York City last January, can you even imagine? Um, no. When we went to VKL, one of um, our fun discoveries was um, mm -hmm. this adorable um, display right outside the entrance of VKL from the Wandering Flock. Uh, Geraldine is the designer and she's absolutely adorable, adorable. Uh, and she, her yarn is just gorgeous. So just I like her such an expression. Oh, it's totally her. like her personality in yarn. Um, so I'm just going to pull up. Oh, look at those. My yarn that's showing up pretty well, except I will say that it is ultra neon like this when you said yolo this that's her colorway mm. and it does not i mean it just doesn't it doesn't come up at all it is not that lemony yellow it is it is highlighter yellow mm -hmm. um so i've got that this is her neon pink this is her um tutti frutti I mean, do you mm, see those that colors? reminds me of Coco that I knit in Cake Wool. Oh, very similar. Yeah. And true definitely pops of neon and they are not coming up at all. Um, this one is one of my favorites. I just want to make sure I get the name right. Icy Lavender. I, that's beautiful. Oh, I'm really craving lavender these days. And then this one is her, um, Neon Sherbert, Sherbert, Sherbet, Sherbet. Um, it's also not coming up. <laughs> Just anyway, her yarn is so spectacular. You look I, like you're building a wall of yarn. Like pretty soon you'll disappear. I will. <laughs> beautiful that is. Anyway, um, I just want to give a shout out to her. Um, and um, when I ordered the yarn, I sort of, you know, mentioned, oh, we met you at BKL and she remembered us and um, knows of our podcast. Probably because we assault everyone we, we meet. We did pretty much assault her and flip I out over her beautiful yarn. <laughs> oh my gosh. she! But she was so adorable. Anyway, um, Geraldine, once we sort of chatted, said we, she would love to do a giveaway with us. And she, um, oh, you're frozen, which means I'm probably frozen. Yeah, you're but, there. You're back. Okay. Did what was the last thing I said? We heard everything you oh, said. Oh, you did. Okay. Good. See you. Okay. So she um, said she wanted to do, work with us to do a giveaway. So I want to show you what she put together for us, um, which are pretty much coming at I me. Mean, don't they go look go well with there? Mm -hmm. um, coming up so beautifully oh, so that pink i yeah the yeah. is that it's, mohair it, or surrey it is mohair so this is a new colorway for her called celosia and i hope you can see sort of it has you know all these beautiful soft oh, running it? through it and then this is her neon pink and it's blowing out a little bit, but that's pretty accurate right there. So um, this is called the Oslo Beanie Kit. So we will be giving away this kit along with the Oslo um, Beanie Pattern, which is from Petite Knits. Um, but we're gonna be doing this on Instagram. And so once this is, once this is posted, this video, we'll please check out our Instagram page. And um, in order to enter for this, you'll need to follow her and follow us, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and 
um, and just enter, you know, enter to win. We're asking and, you to do one entry per person. That's to celebrate the 6,000. Yes, right. So we just hit, yeah, so we just hit 6,000 subscribers, which is super exciting. That sort of happened while we slept. <laughs> so that was very exciting. So this will be our 6,000 um, follower giveaway. So follow, follow Geraldine at The Wandering Flock, tag a friend, and um, you'll be entered to win this Oslo beanie kit, which will be very hard to give up. But now uh, I have a question. I want to show the Oslo hat too. Well, that's my question. Yeah. Because you love the hat so much, the hat, the dragon horde yarn hat, and yeah. Jamie just knit two of them and loved them. I'm just curious, does it have to be the Oslo hat? Um, she was, well, it doesn't have to be the Oslo hat. It's just that she was, she was doing Oslo beanie I kits. I um, but it really could be, we could, we could have it be another beanie hat pattern. Because too. just because you love that hat so much. Yeah. You yeah. Made in the, the um, I, I guess my only concern with that would be whether you can get away with one skein of yarn. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so we can we can find out from the the person who wins whether they like the Oslo pattern or the everyday slouchy beanie. That's um, what it's called everyday. Slouchy. Yeah, everyday slouchy beanie. So, um, but I do want to show you the the hat that um, she has. Sure. Yeah, you know, doing it with her um, her pattern. So it's just a simple, you know, a simple beanie hat pattern gorgeous but she and this is not coming but this is in her neon colorway so anyway Geraldine thank you thank you thank you um we are I mean I'm so excited to knit with your yarn and I'm so excited for other people to um find you um because you are one of those designers that's just so worth supporting because you just exude joy and happiness and she does a lot of little um or she has done some Instagram videos on, on um, the Instagram, I'm not sorry. Yes, the Instagram channel. So check her out because she, just, if you just need a mood lifter, mm -hmm. Geraldine's the gal. So anyway, so we just wanna say thank you to this. So we'll be doing this on Instagram um, and pulling a winner soon. So I nice. uh, loved the sweater she designed for Pom Pom with the, oh. it had like, asymmetrical stripes going through it or oh, something yeah. like that. I, um, I wanted to share a potential a potential sweater I might make, but I have to go get it. So hold on oh, just okay. a second. Let's see. Oh, you mean you have to find it on um, mm -hmm. um. Okay, you found it, Caitlin. Uh oh, Caitlin, did you, did you find that sweater? I did, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yeah, I, the rete. I just showed it to you. But we weren't recording. Oh, I know. Oh, but we are now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you were frozen when I said we were recording. Oh, it was like a little warning would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't like, whatever. Now yeah. you can see our, you know, like, we're the back. new side. <laughs> Yes. Sorry, you you pause the recording. So, yes, um, so this is um the wandering flocks pattern that she published in Pom Pom magazine. It's called, the, if I'm saying it correctly, the Arete sweater. Yeah, and those colors are magnificent. Yeah, so cool. Anyway, so so give um give the wandering flocks some love. Um, and speaking of love, I I wanted to take a moment just to sort of shout out and and thank um so many people that have just done wonderful things for to support our podcast and just thought I would just we kind of wrap up our year by just showing or talking about how grateful we are for everybody's support so first of all to our viewers like thank you for sticking with us in this year of of um hard times uh, it certainly wasn't the year or the way we we intended to podcast and and I think we powered through pretty well and look we're on zoom all of you people who've been waiting <laughs> and waiting for us to get our act together and get on Zoom, we're here. We heard you. We're here. Yeah. For you. yeah. Uh, but uh, so anyway, we but so thank you to our viewers. Um, a special shout out to our Patreon um, supporters. 
who have stuck with us through this year um, and have um, been supporting us all along, which it just, it, it just warms our hearts. Um, and we're so grateful for you um, and supporting us. And we do have plans for, um, you know, the, your support and, and things that we're hoping that 2021 will be the year that Jackie and I can begin traveling again to see each other. Um, so that's definitely something we're looking forward to. Um, you want to shout anything you want to say or I can keep, keep going because I got a list. Here. I have a list. Oh, well, I, I wasn't done, Caitlin. I wasn't oh. done. So now I'm kind of like, well, hmm. What? I'm, not, me... I'm not saying we're done. Oh, okay. Well, let me segue into, I guess we could kind of work backwards because yeah. I was just going to pull this out. Yeah, I think that is um, a moment of gratitude is let's go there. Like, why yeah. not? So yeah. I, I just, I was pulling out this bag, for instance, oh, okay. which has this adorable little maker pin on yeah. it from, and the bag is from Sandy by the Lakeside, and the pin is from Espas Trico, and this little pin is from Wool and Honey, mm -hmm. and all of these things, again, they just, it's that emotional connection. And then inside is this, the sweetest little thing, this little set of stationery, and Caitlin has a set too. So Spas Trico has branched out into stationery, which is a passion of Lisa's and and maybe Melissa's too, but I remember it was Lisa who was just really obsessed with visiting all of yeah. the paper stores. And so they offered for our poetry advent, they gave a viewer one a journal to write in. Yeah. And I feel like all of these things go hand in hand. These this knitting is really about treasuring your life. And taking your life as as a as as a work in progress that you can have an impact on that you yeah. can make more beautiful not just the things but the people you meet along the way so um those melissa and lisa are some of the people we've met along the way and have treasured and yeah. and of course um the sisters at Wool and Honey too, and they're beautiful. Every week they put up a poem on Sundays, which is just incredible. And they've had incredible interviews during this time. And you know, all of those places have had to be really resourceful. How are we going to respond to COVID or whatever? Right. And right. and I'll swing it back to you because I you have you know I don't yeah. want to. Well, I mean, I just think that there are so many people that we just. Um, when we start to reflect back on this year and, and even just the years we've been doing this, it, I can't believe it's actually been years that we've been podcasting. How crazy mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, uh, I mean, as Boss Tree Co has done such, they're, they, they, they're, everything they do is, you know, they set the bar high and we just try to be up there just a little bit following right behind them. But um, we so thank them for um, all the giveaway support that they've they've done this year. Um, Firefly Fibers, I mean, we just absolutely adore Elisa and love supporting her business and, and giving shout outs to, to the yarn she sells and, and the work she does. And so she's done some amazing giveaways for us. And we just are really thankful for that. We know our viewers are too, because she's been extremely generous. And she's had really beautiful sales for viewers too, you know, and each yeah, business yeah. owner has had to respond to this however they according to their circumstances and where they live and whatnot and so it's been really important do you remember when this started is how do you support your local yarn shop yeah. you know and how do you um and i think yarn is a business that's done pretty well during covid because we've all needed the comfort of knitting <laughs> and we've been really grateful for that and not just the comfort of knitting, but also the joy of knitting. And when you think of the joy of knitting, you think knit collage. Yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> and like that vitality. Um, so another person along the way to thank. And, and we have coming up, we have an exciting event where, which is a place where we do a lot of this year long reflecting and giving back to you. And that is our bingo ball. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, and it was funny because we've been that just in case people don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh yeah. Well, we've the past two years we've done a bingo live on YouTube, and we've gotten together, and you've 
chimed in with us and we create bingo boards which are located on our, um, our Ravelry page and I can post them below here today too. And it's all of your knits and experiences from the previous year. You're eligible for a bingo. And we, we, we do it live, then we post it, and then we give away the prizes. So we have fabulous, uh, a fabulous prize for you this year, and perhaps we'll find round up some more in the meantime. And, but it's a way to show your knits and participate in reflecting back on the year. But the thing is, is we were racking our brain going, how are we gonna do this? Because we can't get together and do it live. Well, we realized we can do a Zoom where we can literally have a Zoom and you can come and join us and play bingo with us. I want to so, call it the Caddy Jacks Bingo Hall. I think we need a little Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a Zoom room. It's going to be a bingo hall. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I think I can dig around and show you one of the prizes we, uh, we already have, but I hope it's not for the prizes that you come, but just for the sense of, I don't think it is. It's fun to see what other people have made. So what will happen is we'll call out something like rustic yarn and then anything that you've knit throughout the year and rustic yarn would count on your bingo board. Yeah, and, this way will be, people will be able to hold up their knits. So you should definitely, this will, you know, this will destroy your closet because you will have to pull things out of hibernation, but just stack them up so that you have them ready to go. And then we'll all be able to lift up the yep. things why it's gonna be so fun to see everybody's knits and yes yeah. yes so and drinking is allowed <laughs> yes absolutely i think i'll get jamie to make some pie for that that was another person i wanted to thank i wanted to thank all the people who've come on the podcast this year was it just this year that melissa jenkins came on wasn't she on the same day that james came on and sang to us with yeah. his last now well, maybe yeah i don't know i don't actually i think it was this year because i feel it i know it was yeah. because i was wearing a sweater i wore to vkl yeah yeah so at any rate and sally and lily and jamie for making the pies and all the people who've been sharing pies with us on instagram <laughs> it's been so great to see them we right. got another apple pie in last night i know it's like so she's got cherries downstairs for me if i want to film a little um but what, what I'm really holding out, out on, and so is Joe, my youngest son, is um, French silk pie. Oh. We're really wanting her to work on that. Big, big, but yeah. the bingo, I mean, here's, here's where Caitlin and I haven't firmed up the date, but we're thinking around New Year's Eve day, or that's what I was thinking, but who knows? We'll let you know on Instagram. Yeah, so it's probably New Year's Eve day or New Year's day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. We figured that way more people are off and available and we'll probably do it in the morning because that way people in, in Europe can join us too. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So that's, so, you know, gather up your knits. I looked back and I, this is a, blows my mind, and, but it doesn't, but whatever. There are 29 FOs in my Ravelry queue for this year because, and I think yeah. that's because of COVID. <laughs> wow. That's all you got? Really? Yeah, I know. And that, that's, and it does sound obnoxious what I'm saying right now. And I hate that. I don't, I don't knit for this reason, but I think that's one hat and all the rest of those are shawls and sweaters. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. And that probably explains why your closet fell apart this year. It did. This was the year my, 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 um, the avalanche. Uh, it came right off the plaster. So yeah. Yeah. You need to knit more in mohair. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, no. But that'll uh, be really fun. Yeah. Who else no. do you want to thank, Caitlin? You may. Well, I definitely want to give a shout out to Dinah um, at the knitting place. Um, uh, we we met Dinah and her cohort, cohort Pam uh, at Rhinebeck, and it was a total love fest the second we met them. And just, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think we spent hours standing there talking to them. And Dinah um, is such an inspiration in how she runs her business. And I love how she does all these Instagram lives. And I mean, when, when you sort of are able to, from a distance, see somebody's business and see how well they do it. I mean, they, she and Pam are pretty much on 
every day at the end of the day with their little lives showing the yarn and they kid everything up and they just I, they just have such incredible design mm -hmm. ideas and inspiration and we uh Dinah has done some wonderful yarn support for us so we want to just say thank you mm -hmm. um and we just uh absolutely adore you and we are so looking forward to doing a moonstruck knits uh along with you um and some potential zooms and, and things. <coughs> so i think Dinah has done such a beautiful job of creating community and we're so grateful to have met you um this last, I mean, it was a year and a half ago. I guess it was a little over a year ago, but um, anyway, yeah. I just say hi to Dinah. And she got us to, she, we all made the same sweaters together for Christie's, Christie glasses. Tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. And of course, I'm, that event was so fantastic that, that Christie put together. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And she is hosting an event with knit and escape and us in january a pajama party yeah. which we can't wait for and i did my i might have just had to buy new pajamas for just by the way oh, watch so caitlin's did. face those ones i showed you i just had to get i decided okay, well good good for you <laughs> but <laughs> caitlin and like i like a joint effort and then she's like oh i've just outdone you no no, no it's not about that because caitlin already knows that I adore her pajamas. You do not adore my pajamas at all. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna have to tune in. Okay. Yeah, Kayla, but anyway, so- Kaylin might offer a little cleavage if you come. <laughs> no, <she won't. laughs> Am I not supposed to say that? <laughs> oh, I don't know, like what part of that like made you pause and reflect that that might not have been. <laughs> yeah, my plan is to show a lot of cleavage on our pajama party because that's going to bring in the viewership that we've been looking for. Sure. Oh, oh, I guess. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. But, All right. But the date, are you looking up the date? Oh, yeah. You're looking up the date or I am. Well, you I can share my screen. I will show, I will okay. show you all. So, yeah. Anyway, so um, when it comes to talking about um, our shout outs and our the things we're grateful for, uh, I, I can't, I mean, Christy Glass can't yes. say enough about how grateful I think we all are for what she does to create community. And um, oh, look how cute we are. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, find... <laughs> this is like um, the knit, if you go to Knit and Escape. Here, oh, there. right there. Yeah, there we go. So January 9th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Um, if you go to Knit and Escape's um, to their Instagram page or just go online. Uh, there's an event page for it. Uh, and it's, it will be a fun zoom event. We'll maybe probably be making cookies and doing lots of crazy shenanigans. So we hope you'll join us. Um, but you have to register at knit and escape for that. So yeah, there can be a lot of Caddy Jack's knits in the next couple of weeks here, people. I mean, I know you've all been clamoring for us to do this podcast and then January 10th, you'll be like, I am so done with them for at least a month. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I'm so enjoying the um, the yarny content. Like, yeah. can I? Sh you know how I, I used to have this rule of not showing things that I might potentially make, but the only reason why I want to show it is just because it's such a great new designer discovery. Okay. But yeah. can I do that? What do you think that there are like? Rules. I know. I guess I don't really. I mean, you just teed the whole thing up. Wait, uh, hold on. No, you can't do it. <laughs> do you know how good that feels to say no to her? Does it? Because you're going to do it anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who are we kidding? That's true. That's true. Caitlin <laughs> tries to rein me in sometimes. Are you going <gasps> to do it or what? Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> so. I need to. I, I know need, some serious buildup. This better be a good pattern. Oh, I can't minimize the screen while I'm recording. So you guys are going to have to watch me go around to the designer's website, but I think you can handle it. Ka Caitlin will say something clever while I'm, you know, Googling. Will I? Okay. Yeah. Exactly. All right, well, I'll, so, um, 
while Jackie is saying all that or looking for that, I do also want to just say thank you to Hoof and Arrow, who oh, yes. is an absolutely spectacular jewelry designer. She does um, beaded earrings and um, just wanted to shout out to her. Her, her. her designs were incredible and she did a wonderful giveaway for us. Um, we already, oh, I, we already talked about Catherine from Bed of Roses, but we can't talk about her enough. And I, you should definitely check out her vlogmas if you haven't seen it, if you just want to be swept away by just gorgeous, gorgeous images and her lovely personality. So those are some things that came to mind in terms of what we're grateful for. Absolutely. Are we there yet? I think, can you see it? Yeah, I just don't know which one you're talking about. Oh, okay. So this happens to be Vents, Vencel Knit. Mm -hmm. And our friend... Melissa's making this beautiful yes. cardigan from and, well, well knit. If you want to look at her, yes, look um, at that I'm, diamond jacket. Uh, so beautiful. I didn't know about her. I mean, these yeah. are just incredible. Even this cowl is incredible. Yeah, but this was, do you want to see it? I love her. What? Yeah, it just it's it's funny. It just looks like a beautiful yoke sweater. That's yeah. Oh, I'll just stop here. I like that idea. So this was what I was thinking about knitting for my Christmas sweater, but mm -hmm. it didn't happen. But yeah. it's beautiful and I want to show the yarn anyways. Look at that. Oh, so amazing. That looks beautiful. Right? It has this fold over collar. Which is it's your favorite. Got, yeah, two strands held together. And there she is. Amazing. Yeah, she's beautiful. I love this being able to show you. We could just sit here. This is what we really do in real life is we sit on our phones, we chat and with we each like other. send screenshots back and forth. I know we, we should definitely in January do this with all the things we're thinking about, but yeah. at least you can get one out of the way because we know you'll have 70,000. Um, boy, oh boy, it's not pretty to look at it um, caked up. So let me grab the yarn in the state because that's much more sad. And that was called the dot sweater is that what it was hello so i was going to do the sparky pullover mm -hmm. and you and i was going to i got this from black mountain yarn shop i was mm -hmm. going to knit this and go to tennessee wearing the sparky pullover this is komodo which i oh. think is glorious amazing and then this oh my goodness so this is a nashville tennessee brand yeah. the camilla fiber company is it camellia camellia sorry anyways oh. so i thought instead i would do the spot sweater which you know oh it's gonna be incredible yeah so incredible. that seems really exciting and then there's just i'm gonna show you one more thing that I okay i want to while you do or do you have it there yeah, but yeah, say well, whatever you were going to say. I just want to also um, just say that one of the things I'm most looking forward to this coming year is being able to travel to um, to Black Mountain Yarn Shop in North Carolina. It's only uh, maybe a two-hour drive for me. Um, and I've done a lot of corresponding with Donna, who owns the shop, and she's just lovely. And her shop is I mean, just from what I've seen for her, for her doing her Instagram lives is a spectacular shop and she has curated the most amazing designers there. So I, I think <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lose, lose our, you know what, and our wallets there. Um, mm -hmm. but anyway, Donna, we're so looking forward to meeting you in person and getting to experience your, like I consider your shop, my LYS. So nice. Yeah. Right. Even well, if I have to travel for it. <laughs> So this is just the yarn show off, which I, I don't do very often, but we might as well, obviously. So another place we want to visit is the Knot House with Heather and Kathy. Yes. So I have this new to den yarn, these yes. plates of yarn that Amy Pelko has turned. You can't see yeah. anything well, here, but. Close, well, put it closer to the camera. Oh, there, it picks it up. Okay. You know, so. And then I got this exquisite yarn that Heather dyed to go with it, which is just a, a silk mohair. This is her mo debonair, and it's called Sweet Maple, but I just think it's that glorious. I love this color. So I think these would be fantastic together. 
and I have so many different sweaters that I'm thinking about with that. But one of, so the, if I, the, the Nutidin, you can hold it double, you can hold it single, you can hold it with mohair, you know, it, it doesn't have a gauge. So I might swatch around. I don't know if I can get gauge for this, but this was one that we all are thinking about knitting. Oh yeah. From the Lina magazine. Mm -hmm. So, oh, that would be a great combination for that. Yeah, that could really work. Wow, that would be amazing. So I, I have to, you know, cake it up and play around with yeah. it and see. Yeah, beautiful. We shall see, but that sweater will definitely be knit. Um, and it's nice to see that Lina's put back in publishing again. And of I course know. they have a Moonstruck knit shawl right on the cover, which is oh, a thrill. I know. know. Um, it just needs to stop because <laughs> we can't keep up with her. No, I know. Well, and I just, that's the thing I'm loving about the half and half triangle wrap, by the way. It's just, I have this hesitation with a lot of things right now to do anything too complicated. Yeah. Because I just, I just have to accept the, the, the mindset I'm in. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, 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 and so, and just to be really compassionate with our choices. So one of the goals, I guess I would say for our next podcast is to just really talk about some of our knitting plans for 2021. But with that new knowledge that planning is always has to have flexibility built in and being responsive and that that's what this year among a million other things has taught us. Yeah. It's how to, to be present with whoever you are in the moment that you're in yeah. and what you need and what feels good to you and, and, and take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm. you know. And eat pie. And eat lots of pie. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm going to close with, not that we're closing, but maybe we are. I don't even know. But I am going to, I have a poem. You have a poem. I do. But do you have any? No, I was any? just looking out the window. I, I don't know if it will work. I just want to see if you can see my view out my window. Can you see the snow on the? Or is it blowing out? You need to look. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, it's just white light. Okay. So anyway. Caitlin has put together a passable, just to review some of the things we were talking about here. In this episode, we're having a giveaway for Firefly Fibers for the Incredible Daylights. To enter, you need to follow one of those links and tell us what color or pattern most inspires you in the comments below. You could also leave a comment that said, hi, Caitlin, it's nice to see you or whatever you want, because we love those comments too. Especially so, when they're about me. Well, the sad, I mean, when you do a give, when you put out a content like on YouTube, it is really fun to hear back from you. Yes. It, it just is. I'm just going to say hands down. So we just, I love having been able to meet you on Zoom and in the comments and on Instagram and all of these places. Such a joy for us. Yeah. Um, get your knits all settled out for 2020 because we're going to have our bingo ball. Be looking for the dates and the yeah. Zoom links and all of those things in on Instagram and we'll put it in the show notes as we work it out. And then on Instagram to celebrate all of our viewers, we all have... Um, a giveaway for Wandering Flock yep. for our 6,000 viewer giveaway. And Christy Glass and Caitlin and I will also be having a slumber party. I mean, is that enough, people? Like, what more do you want from us? I think they want pie. Well, they are, everybody wants pie. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, no. Yeah. No. All right, here's, here's the poem, Caitlin. Okay, good, because my, my butt cheeks are falling asleep. Okay. This is called Praying by Mary Oliver. Oh, nice. It says, it doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest. 
but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. That's it. Lovely. Uh, and uh, I just, I think that pretty much sums up what knitting is, is a doorway to pay attention. <laughs> you and better <laughs> You better so, pay attention or you have to call Jackie and get it fixed. True, true. But yeah. pay attention to what brings you joy. And yeah. you guys bring us so much joy. We are so thankful for you. Thank you, all you Patreon yeah. people, too, who are hanging in there with us. And, yeah. and everybody who's commented or viewed or participated in any way at all, we're so grateful for you. Yes, so so thank you so much. It's been um, a lovely year, despite all of the setbacks. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and there she is. It's so, I never would have thought, like, there's Caitlin in Tennessee. I had no <laughs> idea this time last year. <laughs> Neither one of us did. Neither one of us did. This time mm -hmm. last year, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this time last year, Caitlin didn't weave or have a plum on her needles either. No, she didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to, I guess, our wishes, even though we'll see you before the new year, if you come to our bingo, yeah. um, is to keep growing. Because yeah. that's, that's this wonderful, wonderful place. And with wonderful people around you who encourage you and support you, you know. I mean, how lucky are we to be part of this community? I mean, I, I thought about that recently, too, that as much as we all sort of don't enjoy being on Zoom all the time, it has given us such an opportunity to connect with people. And how lucky are we to have that? Because there are plenty of people that don't have this type of outlet or this type of connection. And I can't imagine what this year would be like if we didn't have that to rely on. So that's just yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. I feel like that poetry advent really put that, you know? brought yeah. that home for me like how would i have, how would i have even known amy otherwise exactly i mean that's that's the beauty of this whole thing that we call instagram and youtube so and marco polo our marco yeah. polo group yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes. so good times good yep. times okay so much yeah. love and and we've left it like a to-do list for you all so get busy <laughs> <laughs> exactly as we will be too feverishly putting posting all of the stuff so yeah yeah anyway. okay mm. all right okay Love thank you. you bye everybody bye